It's always a pleasure to speak at conferences such as this, and it gives us all the opportunity to review and share, to review where we are and to re-energise our efforts to prevent accidents and ensure people go home safe from work by sharing. Putting safety and operational risk management at the heart of the group is one of BP's three strategic priorities. Every company is in a different position, different history, systems and portfolio. We at BP are focusing on areas that we believe are important, but we do not claim to have all the answers. I'd like to share with you briefly how we are systematically approaching safety and operational risk at the company level. I do believe that these initiatives are making an important contribution to the safety of our operation. Before I do this, I'd just really like to explain what the word systematic operations means for us in BP. We believe that operations are systematic in control when operational and technical requirements are documented, well understood and practiced, when there are clear accountabilities in place, when competencies are defined and demonstrated, and finally, when conformance is assured. These four expectations underpin the themes I'm now going to share with you. Following the terrible Deepwater Horizon accident, we established a safety and operational risk organization. We call it SNOR. This organization helps us provide an expert view of safety and risk, and it's independent of the business and its line management. The SNOR team is made up of professionals whose focus is on safety and operational risk. Many of these professionals are based around the world in deployed roles alongside our operating businesses. I should stress that the existence of SNOR does not absolve the line managers of responsibility for safety and operational risk. Indeed, we make it absolutely clear that the line is accountable within BP operations for safety. Our SNOR organization is there to help them manage risks effectively, to conduct risk-based assurance, and to challenge them where necessary. The organization has very clear roles. It sets the safety and operational risk requirements. It maintains an independent view of risk, in particular by conducting focused and risk-based assurance on the work of the line and feeding back the input. It provides deep technical expertise in engineering, security, safety, both personal and process, health and the environment. And finally, if necessary, it has the authority to intervene to cause corrective action based on our independent view. We've been taking action in support of three enduring principles, which we believe done systematically together add to a framework for safe, reliable and efficient operations. The first is about people, further deepening capabilities and maintaining a strong focus on safety, very much including the nature of leadership. The second principle is about the actual system that we use to drive systematic operating and to manage safety and operational risk, called our operating management system, OMS. We believe that systematic operation is the foundation of a safe and strong BP. It drives both efficiency and safety, and there, therefore, long-term value. Quite simply, a safe business is a successful business. For BP, systematic operating is about applying our OMS. The third principle is about what we call assurance, essentially assuring ourselves as to whether capabilities are present and OMS is working to continuously strengthen our operations. It includes collating data, measurement and assessment, and also inspecting, auditing and checking. These are layers of assurance or checks and balances. I'll now tell you a little bit more about each of these principles. Our CEO, Bob Dudley, has been really clear in his expectations of the company with respect to safety that safety lies at the heart of BP and the heart of good business. He's also been very clear that he expects leaders to spend time in the field and maintain great sensitivity to risk. 
In the last three years, we've introduced several measures to further support and train our leaders. We are expecting leaders to spend time in the field and engage with staff on the front line, giving them valuable insights into conformance, barriers and risk management. We are providing them with tools and guidance on how to do this effectively. We've enriched our leadership team with people who bring experience from other industries with strong records in managing high hazard operations. On our board, we have a non-executive director, Admiral Bowman. He's a former leader of the, U the US nuclear submarine Navy. This fleet is actually admired for safety worldwide. And Admiral Bowman brings us decades of experience in maintaining a successful safety culture. In addition, our performance contracts require every single employee in the company to set priorities relating to safety and risk management, as well as behavior that embodies our values of safety, respect, excellence, courage, and one team. We talk about capability. We want our leaders and operators to have the skills they need to do the job and lead systematic operations. We've enhanced our group-wide programs to help equip people with the capabilities they need. And these programs reach from senior operations leaders down to the front line of the operating organization. For example, our operating essentials program is for front line staff. It's delivered on site with the teams and more than 6,000 people attended last year alone. It's helping the front line develop skills in areas like continuous improvement techniques, control of work and hazard identification. And these programs are supplemented by other more specific capability programs like our Global Wells Institute that we've opened in Houston. Our second principle is about applying the BP operating management system. It's the foundation of our operations. It's a framework that sets out what has to be done and also how. And it has an annual cycle designed to drive improvement. First of all, the what part of OMS is shown on the left and you can see it as eight elements. Leadership, organization, risk, procedures, assets, optimization, privilege to operate, and results. Each of these elements contains a series of fairly high-level statements on what each operation must do. From leaders providing clear direction through to collecting and learning from performance data. And when necessary, the statements are backed up by standards and procedures that set out how to meet them. The how part of OMS is the performance improvement cycle, or PIC. It's designed to run at least annually and is based on the ISO standard of plan, perform, measure, improve cycle. Its purpose is to identify, prioritize, and plan for implementation of improvements. OMS is used by BP operating entities for all our operation sites. We've created ways whereby sites can learn from each other, including a program called Exemplar which brings specialist coaches onto sites to help them accelerate in particular areas of OMS. Let me now briefly explain how we manage safety and operational risk, as well as the many procedures used at the front line to manage individual risks on a daily basis. We have a single BP-wide required framework within which risks are identified, understood, managed, and where appropriate, reduced or eliminated. Every BP operation performs an annual review of the risks it faces, refreshed as necessary during the year. The operation confirms that controls are in place, sets priorities for further reduction or elimination, and the output of the work is captured in a matrix, while ri risks are plotted to show both their potential severity and probability. In the 2013 risk process, for example, more than 50 businesses comprising many hundreds of facilities, in other words, all of BP's operations, completed risk assessments and risk action plan reviews. And these became inputs to their 2014 plan. This is very powerful. It allows us to set accountabilities for specific risk reduction actions, track the completion of those actions and confirm whether our activities are delivering as intended. One of the tools we find effective is the Bowtie tool, and many of you will be familiar with this tool. On the left, it shows the barriers we create to prevent incidents, 
and on the right the things we do to mitigate the impact if an incident occurs. Along with other methodologies such as HAZOP and LOPA, it helps users to understand and manage both prevention barriers and mitigation barriers. The last principle is checks and balances. It's about inspection, checking, auditing, what we generically call assurance. When it comes to safety, as long as you are careful to maintain clear accountabilities and a clear sense of ownership, two heads can be better than one and three can be better than two. So we have a three-tier approach to assurance. The line is accountable for safety, so they conduct self-verification to confirm whether they're conforming to OMS and their barriers are robust. This is the first tier. Second, SNOR provides targeted risk-based assurance by checking to see how the line is meeting requirements. They do this on a structured way, for example, they may pick a set topic, say control of work, and see how well the line is demonstrating conformance. And last, we have audit. We have an audit team which conducts a risk-based program of regular operational risk audits of the businesses. And we also audit third-party rigs and ships to see if they meet our applicable standards. We believe that this approach is making a difference. Here's just one illustration of why. You can see from this slide some of the key metrics and how we're performing. This is data for BP Group. We continue to see progress year on year in the reduction of process safety events and loss losses of pr primary containment, which are essentially leaks which may be small and which may not reach the environment. In 2008, when we first put this LOPC metric in place, we had 658 releases. Last year, we had 261. Process safety events are obviously an API metric, categorized by tiers depending on their severity. For BP, we saw a reduction in tier one process safety events from 74 in 2011 to 20 last year. Of course, while such data is encouraging, tracking the data is only part of BP's efforts to drive continuous improvements. Even one LOPC can have high consequences and any accident is one too many. Admiral Skip Bowman says, when you think things are going best, you should be losing the most sleep. And of course, there's a clear message about never being complacent. So that brings me to the end of my talk. I hope that from what I've shared with you, it's clear that safety and operational risk are truly at the heart of BP. It all starts with leadership from Bob Dudley, our CEO, down. The tone, message, and expectations are clear. Our new safety and operational risk organization is acting as an independent expert body in BP to help further improve the quality of operations. We believe they are making a difference, but we also know there is more to do. We must remain vigilant. Thank you for your time today. I hope that some of this will be helpful. Thank you.